you're a 45 year old woman, you're more likely to get an osteoporosis fracture than you are to get breast cancer, ovarian cancer, or uterine cancer. And if you're over 65 and you break your hip, there's up to a 36% chance that you're going to be dead within a year. And for those people who survive, half of them never regain their full level of mobility and pain-free life that they had. And 20% require ongoing care. Hey, midlifers, welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Are you ready to break free from your mundane midlife? Are you feeling trapped in a vicious cycle of rinse and repeat days? No matter if you're experiencing a divorce hangover, job burnout, or you just have the midlife blues, I got you. Hey, I'm Wendy, your hostess of the Midlife Mostest. I too was hit by midlife like a freight train. I too felt stuck in the same dull chapter. I wanted the clarity of how to create a new life beyond divorce and the courage to leave an unfulfilling career. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't worthy and it was just easier to stay in my comfort zone until I found a little secret, the freedom to live my life my way. In this podcast, you will learn how to achieve a vibrant midlife mind and body, how to create solid relationships through love and loss, and how to create an awesome second half of life. Grab your grande latte, pop in your earbuds, and let's get this midlife party started. Welcome back to the Midlife Makeover Show, everyone. We have an awesome guest today and a great topic, a topic we've actually never discussed on the show before, and I actually don't know much about it. So I'll be asking lots of questions <laughs> for everybody, including myself. All right, today's guest is Dr. John Neustadt, the founder and president of Nutritional Biochemistry. Dr. Neustadt earned his naturopathic medical degree from Bastyr University, where he was awarded the Founders Award for Academic and Clinical Excellence. Wow. Dr. Neustadt has published more than 100 medical articles, written four health and wellness books. I'm, I'm only on like book number one. I'm impressed. <laughs> such a challenge and is now a number one Amazon best-selling author in the field of osteoporosis. His most recent book is Fracture Proof Your Bones, a comprehensive guide to osteoporosis. Dr. Neustadt was also an editor of the textbook Laboratory Evaluations for Integrative and Functional Medicine, which was used across the United States to train and educate physicians, probably my ex-husband, <laughs> on using functional medicine with their patients. Dr. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's an amazing yeah. topic, and I'm happy that we're uh, introducing yeah. it to your audience. So what made you want to get into talking about osteoporosis or the study of it and teaching about it? I never saw this in my future uh, when I was in medical school and when, when I got out. Yeah. But what happened was the universe has a strange way of telling us what we need to focus on and what we need to learn. Mm -hmm. I started getting patients coming into my clinic with osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. And I was working um, from an integrative medical perspective and working mm -hmm. with them and seeing changes in their bone density, seeing their bone density going up. Mm -hmm. And some of them were also taking medications. And my mother-in-law has mm -hmm. osteoporosis. Ah. And so I was doing a little work with her and she was taking Fosamax and her bone density was going up. Her physician was happy. I was happy. She was happy. And then she fell and broke her hip. Oh. And I thought to myself, there's something wrong with this picture. So I started digging into the research. And what I found sh absolutely shocked me. Mm. A bone density test only predicts 44% of women with osteoporosis who will break a bone and only 21% of men. Mm. And, and the risk of fractures, which is the most dangerous thing with osteoporosis, the risk of fractures depend on factors largely other than bone density. But mm -hmm. despite that, that's been, we've known since the 1990s, this information that for bone density predicts less than half the women who will break a bone. Mm. Despite that, doctors are myopically focused on changing that number on the test 
-hmm. and they're not trained and they're not having the conversations around Mm -hmm. diet, lifestyle, exercise, the more holistic approaches that the research shows are necessary to fracture proof somebody's bones, to help people avoid that complication of this, that disease, but also to build stronger bones, to improve bone density, but more importantly, to maintain strong bones. And so Mm -hmm. I dove into the research and here I am, you know, 17, 18 years later with lecturing at medical conferences and, and writing books and passionately educating people about what they can do Mm-hmm. And to create their own holistic plans because they're not going to be getting this information from their physicians. Yeah. So taking more of a proactive approach Absolutely. instead of react, instead of waiting until it's too late. But a question, well, I have a, I have a couple of questions. Can you reverse it once? Absolutely. It, oh, Absolutely. very cool. But we don't yes. want to try to reverse it. We just want to like get ahead of it if we can. Right. So ideally, you know, it's the saying prevention is worth a pound of cure or whatever that that saying is, of yeah. course, if we can prevent it. The beautiful things is that all of the holistic approaches also can help prevent osteoporosis from developing in the first place when it comes to the diet, the lifestyle recommendations that I, that I teach. And then I talk about in, in my book, that's all just good recommendations for creating not only healthy bones, but a healthy brain, a healthy body, yeah. a healthy cardiovascular system, it, this mm-hmm. beautiful web of interactions that our body has mm-hmm. is that when you're, when you're doing the right thing for one area of your health, your bones, for example, you're also going to be benefiting other areas of, of, of your health as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, What is osteoporosis exactly? Osteoporosis is a condition where the bones are steadily getting weaker Mm. and it increases your risk for fractures. Mm. Okay. And when does it normally start to decline your bone density? So the peak bone density is in our 20s, about 20 to 29, you get there, your peak bone density as you're, as you're growing and maturing. Mm-hmm. And then it's understood generally in the research that you're starting to slowly lose bone. Mm. But estrogen maintains bone quality and quantity. Mm. And I want to make a real distinct, distinguished, uh, distinguishing comment between those two. Mm -hmm. So there's bone quantity. That's the amount of bone, your bone mass, your bone mineral density. Mm -hmm. That's the amount of bone. Hmm. But then there's the bone, the bone quality. The bone quality is your bone collagen and the other proteins. And because bone is not just minerals, there are Mm -hmm. over 180 to 200 proteins in your bone, collagen being one of them. Wow. And it's that collagen and that extracellular matrix, those proteins, those other things that really give bone its quality or what's considered its ultimate strength. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to go into that a little deeper uh, in a few minutes, but to answer your question about, you know, when does it start to develop in it's a disease that primarily affects people as they get older. Mm -hmm. So when a woman goes through menopause and estrogen drops, Mm-hmm. For the 10 years after, you know, as you go through menopause and the 10 years after, that's the that's when the fastest rate of bone loss occurs. Mm. But there is a huge problem in this country where you have people developing complications with their bones, their bones getting weaker, increasing their risk for fractures, even before that, yeah. because they're taking medications that damage bone like yep. antidepressant medications, mm-hmm. the acid blocking medications, yeah. uh, prednisone. There is a long list of medications and that's a, a real blind spot for physicians not understanding the medications that are doing doing that. And so they're mm-hmm. prescribing medications, not understanding that they're actually creating osteoporosis and in, in mm. fractures. Yeah, the uh, that word menopause... <laughs> came to mind as soon as you said estrogen, I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. ding, 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 ding. So basically, of course, my listeners being at midlife and a lot of them going through menopause or perimenopause, you like really have to be proactive about this. 
Absolutely. Right? Yeah. It, it is it is such a, a concern in such an epidemic that it, globally it's second only to cardiovascular disease as a health issue. Every oh. 30 seconds, somewhere somebody is breaking a bone because of osteoporosis. Wow. And if you're a 45-year-old woman, you're more likely to get an osteoporosis fracture than you are to get breast cancer, ovarian cancer, or uterine cancer. And if you're over 65 and you break your hip, there's up to a 36% chance that you're going to be dead within a year. And for those people who survive, half of them never regain their full level of mobility and pain-free life that they had. And 20% require ongoing care. So it is something that people do need to be aware of. They need to be proactive about. They need to understand that this is a silent disease, just like cardiovascular is a silent disease, where for years and years, Mm -hmm. your bones can be degenerating and getting weaker and weaker without you having any symptoms until one day, snap, you just break a bone. That often is the first sign of that somebody has osteoporosis because they weren't screened for it. Yeah. So when do you, when do you get screened for it? When is the best time? So the, so in general, Mm -hmm. the screening recommendations are that, uh, when a woman goes through menopause, it's basically 65 year old women Mm -hmm. older should be screened Mm -hmm. and a, a premenopausal women, woman with risk Mm -hmm. factors. And that's a very interesting word with risk factors Mm -hmm. should be screened. Okay. There is a long list of risk factors, though. So mm-hmm. what you know, what the bottom line is it, about you know ninety plus percent of people who are eligible to get screened are not getting screened, and that's mm-hmm. what the, the research is showing. Mm-hmm. But also, there's the recommendation by the Bone Health and Osteoporosis Foundation, which I personally like, mm-hmm. and I'm on the corporate advisory roundtable for that uh, association for that organization. Nice. And that recommendation is that if you're 50 years old or older, man or woman, and you break a bone, you should get a bone density test. Wow. I advocate that any woman who's starting Mm -hmm. to just go through menopause, they get a bone density test to get their baseline, to see where they're at. And then obviously if they're taking any medications or have any of the the diseases or other things that Mm -hmm. we know create osteoporosis, they get a bone density test as well. So even if, like you said, though, too, was it 44 percent are not detected, as we said? 44 never been good at stats. An osteo, a bone density test only predicts 44 percent of women with osteoporosis who will break a bone and only 21 percent of men. That was from a study you know, all the way back yeah. in 2008. I believe that's when it was published. Yeah. So if it comes back positive, then you got to go into some like serious repair, recovery and really, really get back to, to your health. And then even if not, if it comes back negative, you still got to, like you said earlier, you got to prepare and prevent and be proactive about it. So there are two primary cells in bones. There's the osteoblasts Mm -hmm. and those build up bone. And there's Mm -hmm. the osteoclasts, the osteoclasts break down old bone. Mm -hmm. And both of them should be balanced and Mm -hmm. in a healthy system, a healthy physiology of the bone, you get bone remodeling happening all the time where old bone is being broken down and healthy new bone is being created. And in fact, mm-hmm. about every 10 years, your bone is totally new. And bone is more than just wow. even the minerals and the collagen. Your bone mm-hmm. marrow produces your red blood cells and your white blood cells for your immune system and, you, and, and your platelets. So it does a big job. There's a lot going mm-hmm. on in your bones. Yeah. And what happens with osteoporosis, it is essentially a disease of imbalance. Where the mm-hmm. where the destructive forces are 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 winning, mm-hmm. and the 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 forces that build bone and keep you healthy are losing, and so mm-hmm. it's a matter of reestablishing that balance and promoting that good healthy bone to build up again. Yeah, I was just thinking though, as you were saying that about our bones, like I mean, very rarely do we think about what's inside <laughs> the skin, right? That like this body that's carrying us around in life. And I mean, my gosh, your bones are so incredibly important, right? Like that's what's holding us up. So we can sit here, we can stand, or we can go do all the exciting things Mm -hmm. we want to do in the second half of life, right? Garden, play with our our kids and grandkids, hug our loved ones, all of it. Yeah. I was talking about my uh, Aunt Annie on a show like not too long ago. She's 90, still plays tennis, very healthy. And I was like, I want to 
be like Aunt Annie, right? When I'm 90. But we do have to think about what will we look like and feel like and be like when we're 70, 80, 90. Like we're so used to thinking like, oh, we're still young, which we are. I still think that way. But you really do have to be proactive about it because you're not going to get to go do all those things or play with the grandkids and you're, you've really got to get ahead of it. Right. So, Absolutely. so what can you do? What are some of the things that you can do to prevent? Great question. So mm-hmm. in, in my book, I, I walk people through how they can create a holistic plan for themselves. And that same mm-hmm. approach is also works uh, for helping to maintain your bone health as as well. So mm-hmm. the first thing I do, or I recommend people do, is they they look in their medicine cabinet. So mm-hmm. we want to remove anything that's creating damage. Yeah. And because if not, it, you know, anything we're doing to try and build bone back up and become stronger, it's like pushing a boulder up a hill. You know, yeah. you want to create the environment for your body to thrive as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And in order to do that, we want to eliminate things that are creating the damage. Mm-hmm. And one of the big culprits for that are medications, as I've already mentioned. So check your medicine cabinet. And I talk in the book, there's a whole chapter on medication induced osteoporosis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm, I've, I've given medical talks on it and mm-hmm. I'm going to be giving a talk pretty soon on cancer treatment induced osteoporosis. Yeah. And two, oh yeah. Two conferences. And, and so there's a lot of things that can damage, damage bone. Uh, mm-hmm. Most commonly you've got your acid blocking medications, your um, antidepressants like Prozac mm-hmm. and Wellbutrin. And, yep. and those are so damaging those, those categories of antidepressants mm-hmm. that research has, has estimated that uh, for every, 19 women taking them, one will break a bone. And another oh. came up, concluded that for every 49 taking them, one will break a bone. So you've got, you know, right. it is, it is damaging. It's, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. and then the acid blocking medications, if you take it continuously, which was never approved by the FDA. Mm-hmm. In fact, they came out in 2010 with a warning that they could damage bone that, that uh, taking it for four years continuously is associated with an increase of 60% increase in hip fracture risk. Mm. So there, there, that's, that's one thing that, that somebody can do. Mm-hmm. The other thing to, to make sure that, that people are doing is eating optimally. Mm-hmm. There have been lots of studies done about what is the optimal diet, you know, vegan, vegetarian, omnivore, your Mediterranean mm-hmm. diet, all these different ty- styles of diet. And the research is very clear yeah. eating a Mediterranean dietary pattern, a plant forward dietary pattern with ample amounts of protein mm-hmm. is associated with a 20% decrease in fracture risk oh, and osteoporosis, big. huge and hip fracture, yeah. which is the most dangerous type of fracture. Yes. Yeah. So diet is, is, is crucial. Mm-hmm. Then exercise, obviously, I think that's a no brainer. People understand that, mm-hmm. but you have to be careful if you have osteoporosis because you are at an increased risk for fracture. And right. if you're doing the wrong type of exercise or t- doing exercise that is, that is putting pressure and impacting your bones in the wrong way, you mm-hmm. could act, you could be increasing your risk for right. a fracture, which that makes sense. All right. So 95% of fractures occur because somebody falls. Mm-hmm. So anything we can do to prevent falls is going to prevent fractures and other fall related injuries. So I mm-hmm. like simple suggestions that people can work into their daily lives. Sure. You can go to a gym and pump iron as long as you're doing it safely. You could do exercise yeah. classes. All that's great if mm-hmm. that's what you want to do, but you don't have to do that. Right. Right. Just walking. Yeah. And it's not even 10,000 steps a day. Walking 7,000 to 7,500 steps a day is yeah. associated with a 50 to 70% reduction in all cause mortality. That wow. means from, from every cause that's from mm-hmm. osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease, dementia, part, you know, on and on mm-hmm. and on. Yes. So simple things like that. Yeah. The stork exercise I love. So while you, you know, storks love to, to, stand on one foot. So while you're brushing your teeth, the bottom teeth, you know, you, you can't see, but I'm standing on one leg. Now you brush the bottom yep. teeth for a minute. I do that too. Like to the top pose. teeth. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that'll help work a little bit of the core muscles, a little bit of the quads, a little bit of the glutes, you know, just to help with that stability, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Making sure people's homes are, are fracture proof and mm-hmm. safe that loose steps are, are, uh, are fixed. That throw there are no throw rugs that people can, especially if you shuffle, catch your foot on, 
and mm-hmm. fall that there's there's a list and that to go through to, as a sort of a checklist that I've got in the book as well, like right. what to do if, if you're home. Yep. Then there is sleep. And this is something mm-hmm. that's commonly not discussed. And this is both, this is definitely for prevention, but also I would say for the, you know, stopping the progression or helping just restore that balance that I, that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that is if people are not getting enough sleep, that's associated with a faster rate of bone loss and an increased risk of osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. Then of course, uh, something that's not talked about. And I say, of course, because I, I think it's so obvious how important human connection is for total mm. health and wellness. Yep. But there are studies that looked at social networks. That is, do people have social support? Do they have friends that they 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 can call on and count on? That is associated with a reduction in hip fracture uh, and all-cause mortality, death from all causes, but also a faster recovery from a fracture if they were to get one. Yeah. And so there's a whole chapter on social support in my book as well. And, and that's, that's important. And then of course I talk about dietary supplements because targeted nutrients, taking the right nutrients shown to not just promote healthy bone density, because I Mm -hmm. discussed the limitation of that test. It's just an important piece of the puzzle, but just one piece of the puzzle, but Mm -hmm. more importantly, nutrients that have been shown in clinical trials to maintain strong bones as indicated by reducing fractures in those studies, not just improving the number on a test. So if you're like, so for me, if I haven't been tested and I want to get started and I already eat well, I move my body, all that good stuff. Is there a certain amount, you know, like certain supplements that, okay, I could take these and at least that will, I mean, it's not going to hurt. Right. I mean, certain, I don't so, know. Or what so it. to be clear, dietary mm-hmm. supplements are not approved by the FDA to diagnose, treat, yep. or prevent any disease. Yep. There are nutrients that have been studied in certain populations of patients, uh, postmenopausal osteoporosis, for example, or yeah. osteoporosis induced by some medications mm-hmm. and shown to promote bone health. Mm-hmm. In terms okay. of if you are, if you are, do not have osteoporosis yet and taking these, these nutrients, is that going, are they going to help you? Well, those for, for the, the most nutrients, that data just doesn't exist. So right. I, I like to say the, the, <laughs> the lack of evidence is not the evidence of a lack of effect, meaning right. that the studies just haven't been done. Mm-hmm. So they may be helpful, but we're just not sure. Right. So right. There, are, there are four nutrients that fall into that, only four. If you look at these bone health supplements, that are out there in the market, you know, they can have five, six, 10 different nutrients in it, yeah. but only four nutrients that are actually in dietary supplements has ever been shown to, to fit the criteria that I just mentioned. And mm-hmm. that is, does it promote healthy bone density, mm-hmm. but more importantly, does it maintain strong bones as indicated by reducing fractures in clinical trials? Only mm-hmm. four nutrients. Yeah. So you'll often see magnesium in supplements or yeah. boron in supplements. Those don't yeah. fit that criteria. I'm a big huh. fan of those, but I think you should get them from diet. Right. I think you should, yeah. you, right. Or a, a, a good multivitamin if you want to supplement with some of those. But when mm-hmm. I'm talking to people about bone health, I have a very targeted approach. Mm-hmm. And that is what's going to fit that criteria of maintaining strong bones. So those four nutrients are a specific form of vitamin K2 called MK4, mm. calcium and vitamin D. And another mm-hmm. mineral called strontium. Mm-hmm. I'll talk, and it, it, I'm happy to talk about each each one of those. Yeah, what is strontium? Strontium is a is a mineral. Mm-hmm. It is naturally occurring in soils, mm-hmm. but it's also been studied in Europe for osteoporosis. In fact, it was approved for a while in Europe as a medication for osteoporosis. The form of the strontium that was studied and approved is called strontium granulate. Now, in the U.S., that doesn't exist. It's not a medication. It's a dietary supplement. It can be found in dietary supplements as strontium citrate. Hmm. Now, to be clear, there are no clinical trials on strontium citrate, either for safety or effectiveness. What we know with the strontium ranolate is that it did improve bone density, but at least part of that improvement was due to creating false bone density test results. 
And that's because a bone density test is an X-ray and that the machine shoots an X-ray into your body. It bounces off the bone Mm -hmm. and the angle at which it bounces off the minerals in the bone is interpreted through the mathematical wizardry of the machine and spits out (laughs) the the answer of the T-scores and what your bone density is. Well, estrontium Mm -hmm. is heavier than calcium. And so when the, when the x-ray gets, you know, strikes that mineral, the angle at which it bounces off the mineral is different than it is for other minerals. Hmm. And because it's not a medication in the U S the machines and the radiologists aren't, they do not, uh, compensate for that. They can't calibrate the machines to change the calculation. And so it gives you a false bone density test result. But more importantly than that, it's been shown to reduce fractures. Hmm. However, of the six large clinical trials done with strontium ranolate, five of those showed that it only reduced vertebral fractures. It did not reduce hip fractures. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But then there's a safety concern that's been raised as well. Hmm. Strontium has been removed as a medication uh, in different markets in, in Europe. Because what they discovered is that it increases the risk for blood clots that can cause stroke and heart attacks. Wow. And, th- and, and blood clots in the lungs as well, called a th- thrombo um, in mm. the lungs. So mm. like a pulmonary embolism is what that's right. The mm. So much so that the conclusion was that for every one person helped by reducing a fracture risk with strontium mm. ranolate, one person would be getting one of these dangerous blood clots that could kill Wow. Them. Right. So okay. that's my concern with strontium. Yep. It is still available as, as a dietary supplement in the U S however. Mm-hmm. Now then there's calcium, vitamin D, which everybody's heard of. Yeah. And M- MK4. Mm-hmm. MK, what is MK4? MK4 is a specific form of vitamin K2. It's become oh, vitamin K2 okay. has become more popular. There's a mm-hmm. lot of confusion around vitamin K, not yeah. just in the general public, but even among researchers. And you look in the in the medical research, you'll have articles and research studies that are reporting the results of the research study, and they're just saying, well, we use vitamin K2, mm-hmm. or it's a review of the research. It's of they just talk about vitamin K2. But the reality is. Vitamin K is a category. Mm-hmm. There's a different subtypes of vitamin K. So the, so in that, that overarching category of vitamin K, there's vitamin K1, mm-hmm. which is found in green leafy vegetables. And then there's vitamin K2. And within that column of vitamin K2, there are many different forms of vitamin K2. Mm-hmm. MK4 is one form. MK7 is another form. And I mentioned those two because that's what's commonly what you may find in dietary supplements where people are going to, to see. Mm-hmm. And these, these websites on the, on the internet, researchers that are just talking about vitamin K2 as though it's one, one, you know, the same thing. Yep. But the reality in biochemistry and how the body works is they're not the same molecules. If yep. you change one atom, one carbon atom on a, on a, on a molecule, for example, you mm-hmm. can get, you will get different results biochemically. You'll get different mm-hmm. actions in the body. Now there's overlap, right? So there's overlap in what MK4 and MK7 do. They have similar activities, but they also have different activities. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the, how at least I've prioritized my decisions of what I think is most important when it comes to bone health, that is that it both promotes healthy bone density, but also maintains strong bones as indicated by reducing fractures in clinical trials. Mm. Only MK4 in the amount of 45 milligrams per day has been shown to do that. Mm. It's been so well studied that since 1995, it's been approved by the Ministry of Health in Japan for bone health. Now, I discovered this research when I was diving into the the literature in 2007, 2008, as I was starting, starting on all of this. And there was no supplement in the United States that existed that had the clinical trial dose available and combined with calcium and vitamin D. So I created that solution. I created a company to provide that to my patients. 
Wow. And that's how MBI was born. And since then it's grown. And so that's OsteoK and OsteoK Minis, two versions of this of the same product, both with the, that clinical dose of the MK4, 45 milligrams per day. Mm-hmm. Now M with calcium and vitamin D. Now MK7 mm-hmm. has been shown, it, it's been shown if you did a research, there's a blog on my website, an article. It's called MK4 or MK7, which is better for bones or which is best for bones. Mm-hmm. When I do, if you do a research of the National Library of Medicine database, which is the gold standard for housing peer-reviewed literature, uh, medical literature and medical research, you see if you, when I searched just a few months ago, again, for MK7 and MK4, bone density, osteoporosis, fractures, you know, all those keywords Mm-hmm. There are only, I think, five clinical trials with MK7, and it only showed that it slowed the rate of bone loss, even at different mm-hmm. doses. It didn't actually improve bone density, mm-hmm. but more importantly, it's never been shown to maintain strong bones as indicated by fewer fractures in any clinical trials as the endpoint in the studies that they were looking at, that they were evaluating. Mm-hmm. In, in contrast, there are 25 clinical trials with MK4, Mm -hmm. at least five of them look not just at bone density, but also fractures as the outcome and multiple meta-analyses done. That's where they review, they they pool the data to see, you know, are the trends accurate, what we've seen, or is there something we're missing? Multiple meta-analyses have also concluded that MK4 in that dose, 45 milligrams per day, Main, it promotes healthy bone density, but more importantly, maintains strong bones as indicated by more than 70% fewer fractures in clinical trials. Wow. I can see why you got so many awards. <laughs> Thank you. I like I I'm so bad at memorizing all that stuff. I'm like, wait, what? So, I mean, it's so great though, too, that you started your own supplement company. Well, and that I- you have all of these. I, I right, do right and for osteoporosis. So for for bone support mm-hmm. and bone health, yes, I have I have the osteo K and the osteo K minis. The only difference right. is the amount of calcium because not everybody needs a full thousand milligrams as a as mm-hmm. a as a dietary supplement, you know, supplemental calcium. In fact, I would argue that most people don't need that and shouldn't be taking a thousand milligrams a day. They should be taking yeah. a lower amount of calcium as a dietary supplement. But yes, there were solutions. I needed things for my patients. So I, for yeah. example, I had a lot of women coming in and complaining about uh, cramping and constipation and nausea with iron supplements. So I went yes. over into the research and I created a, a, a product that's the highest dose concentration of iron as ferrous bisglycinate on the market, 45 mm-hmm. milligrams per capsule. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't cause any of those problems, and it's highly absorbable. The reason why the cramping and all those those side effects occur is because your body is not absorbing the, that form of the mineral, and so it's right. irritating your system. Mm-hmm. And so I found a form, and I created the product. And and wow. similar for brain health, for omega three fatty acids, it doesn't cause that that regurg, that burping up, and is yeah. highly absorbable. And yep. for circulation and blood pressure, mm-hmm. uh, I think there are about 13 products now I've formulated uh, over the years, multivitamin, you know, all for my patients, things that I needed clinically yeah. and that were guaranteed to give results. So if someone's not sure, like what to take, not to take is the best thing to do. Start with the book and in the book, will it have some guidance there of what to, uh, what to do and not to do? Absolutely. The book okay. very I was I was methodical mm-hmm. about creating in the book chapters that have at the end of the chapters a take action sections. So mm-hmm. as people progress through the book, it is helping them create their holistic plan that works yeah. best for them. It can be overwhelming. And in fact, it is overwhelming. Yeah. And it's yeah. anxiety producing. So I can't tell you how many times I've talk to people who have a diagnosis of osteoporosis and they're scared and they're anxious. And I understand it is a scary diagnosis, but what I have them do. And I, and I say this, I said, okay, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. This is not an emergency. Yes, Mm -hmm. it's serious, but there's time to educate yourself 
to learn the options, to learn the questions to ask your doctor to make sure you're getting the best possible recommendations for your care. There's a whole chapter on osteoporosis medications in the book as well. Mm -hmm. And time for you to create your holistic plan. And you don't have to tackle everything at once. In fact, I would argue people shouldn't try and do everything at once because right. it, it's a major, it, it's usually just major changes for people and radical yeah. changes done overnight tend not to be sustainable. Right. And the dietary recommendations, for example, the, the exercise recommendations, mm -hmm. you know, those are recommendations based on the research that are shown to promote health for the rest of your life. It's not a fad right. diet. So I recommend wherever anybody's at, you know, just pick one or two things, one or two chapters and just start there and start build there, yeah. over time. Yeah. And better to start now than, you know, you don't want to wait until it's too late until no. you get that bad result or you break a hip or break a bone. It's like, start now. And I tell everyone all the time, I mean, I try to, it's, I mean, it's really the basics, right? As far as food and exercise, just move your body, eat the pros, like the pros and the produce. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Pros. I love yeah. that. Yeah. That nice? Actually, it was a guest yeah. on my show that said that. I was like, oh, I like that. Eat your pros. Um, but really, like, you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to get overwhelmed about it. The good thing is somebody like you broke it down and made it very simple. You wrote a book about it. You've got the supplements. You've got the recommendations. That makes it so much easier for all of us out here, <laughs> especially oh. for me. But it does make mm. me think too. Like I, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, I still, I think I'm like in my twenties. But I'm like, oh my gosh. Wait a minute. I am fifty. I do have a fifty year old body. Like I have to make sure that I am taking care of my eighty year old body and my ninety year old body. I do need to be more proactive about that. And, and I know how much, you know, supplements can help. And, and even if like, just, yeah, your diet and exercise is huge. What you're doing on a daily basis and sleep is so important. All those are the foundations yeah. of long-term health. And I, I, I want to, I just want to mention two things quickly, mm -hmm. even with the fad diets, the high protein diet, you know, keto and, and, and those high protein, you know, diets, yeah. I repeatedly find when I talk to people and I do a diet recall or an intake and try and understand how they're eating and mm -hmm. they calculate how much protein they're eating, they are repeatedly not eating enough protein. And as we get older, we require more protein to maintain muscle and bone. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the amount of protein that we're eating can account for up to about 4% of our bone mineral density. Mm. And the rec, the U S RDA for protein is insufficient as people get older to maintain yeah. muscle and bone. So I give specific protein targets and recommendations based on body nice. weight in yeah. the book that people can calculate. It's a very simple calculation. Wow. And also the other thing I have people focus on is plants, plants and protein. Yep. That's, that's really breaking it down. Very it's simple. Pros. The pros. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, and the other thing, yeah. the other thing I would just mention in terms of you know, you, you talked about being you know, proactive and people mm -hmm. educating themselves. Unfortunately, you, you, most doctors out there, if you read this book, you're going to know more than probably 99% of doctors out there. Yeah. And there is a study that came out in Europe, and I don't think it's any different in the, than in the US a few years ago. I think it just came out of Sweden or Switzerland. And they, they trying to figure out, well, why is, is osteoporosis so undertreated? and mm. under screened for just like it is here. Mm -hmm. And what they found out is that doctors are confused that when they see a test result, they don't know how to interpret it. They wow. don't know then what, what, you know, if they're going to recommend a medication, you know, which medication is best. And in, mm -hmm. in, in fact, even here, the first line therapy still is Fosamax. Yeah. But if you have postmenopausal osteoporosis and you've never broken a bone with osteoporosis before, uh -huh. Fosamax has never been shown. It doesn't Fosamax or any of the oral bisphosphonates do not prevent both a, a vertebral and hip fracture from occurring. Wow. If you've never had one before, huh. right? So doctors don't understand that they don't, they're not trained in, in terms of the, the diet exercise, uh, and, and don't understand how to have those more nuanced conversations and are pressed for time. They have to mm -hmm. see a volume of patients. And so it's imperative that people take their health into their own hand and yep. into their own hands and educate themselves and learn what they can do. 
Yeah, you're so right. Yep, you're so right. Um, where can we find you? My website is the great place, nbihealth.com. It's nbihealth.com. And then the name of the book, which you can get on Amazon is, what is it again? What's the name of the Fracture book? Fracture Proof Your Bones, yes. a comprehensive guide to osteoporosis. I love it. This has been good. Oh, good. Thank you. I've learned a lot. Yeah. I mean, it makes me like, I, I feel like my own interviews are like little mini workshops for myself. <laughs> Wonderful. I just actually, I have you on here for me and everyone else gets to benefit and listen. That's it. No, <laughs> it's just for me. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you. I can't wait for your next book. I'm working on it. What, do you, what is it? Give me a no, hint. I'm going to keep it under, <laughs> under wraps at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably finish yours before I finish mine. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I, you and I talked about it. You're I much know. further along. You're oh, doing so I'm excited for yours to come out. I can't wait to read it. Thank you so much. You're awesome. And now for the nuggets and midlife wisdom from today's show. Number one. Bone density test only predicts 44% of women with osteoporosis who will break a bone and only 21% of men. Number two, osteoporosis is a condition where the bones are getting weaker and it increases your risk for fractures. Number three, all of the holistic approaches such as a healthy diet, lifestyle, exercise, and the recommendations that Dr. Neustadt teaches in his book, Fracture Proof Your Bones, can help prevent osteoporosis from developing. Number four, osteoporosis is secondary to cardiovascular disease and every 30 seconds, this is crazy, someone is breaking a bone due to osteoporosis. Number five, the first thing you can do to build better bones is to take a look inside your medicine cabinet and remove anything that is creating damage to your bones. Dr. Neustadt's book provides the info you need to help you eliminate bone-damaging medicine. Number six, the second thing you can do to build healthy bones is to eat optimally. And research has shown that eating a Mediterranean diet is best and will decrease your fra fracture risk by 20%. Basically, you guys, eat your pros. Eat your proteins and your produce. Number seven, Supplements can be very helpful in preventing osteoporosis. Don't know which supplements to take? No problem. Get a copy of Dr. Neustadt's book, Fracture Proof Your Bones, and he will help you create your holistic plan that works best for you. Dr. Neustadt, thank you so much for being on the show and educating all of us about osteoporosis. I don't know about you guys, but I learned a ton during this episode. I'm motivated to take better care of my bones, and I hope you are too. You have to take care of that beautiful skeleton of yours that carries your soul through life so you can be your best, feel your best, and live your best life. Oh, yes. Make sure you get a copy of Dr. Neustadt's book, Fracture Proof Your Bones, A Comprehensive Guide to Osteoporosis, and check out his website at mbihealth.com. Use code, don't tell anyone. No, actually tell everyone. Use code NBI10, that is NBI10, for 10% off supplements. You can also receive up to 30% off with quantity discounts. Thank you for listening. And if you know of anyone that needs to hear this episode who needs to be educated about osteoporosis, which, okay, basically that is everyone you know, please forward this episode to them. You can literally save their life. All right, thanks so much. Have a great day, everyone. Did this podcast inspire you, challenge you, trigger you to make a change or spit out your coffee laughing? Good. Then there are three ways you can thank me. Number one, you can leave a written review of this podcast on Apple iTunes. Number two, you can take a screenshot of the episode and share it on the social media and tag me, Wendy Valentine. Number three, share it with another midlifer that needs a makeover. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Get out there and be bold, be free, be you.